Your purpose in life is defined for you and the giftings you receive. God does not place vision inside of you without making a place for you to exercise your faith. Elijah's great. He's inspirational. <laughs> I, I love that he's like true to who he is. Definitely true to himself. Getting into a whole other level of Elijah. I leveled up from Goku to Super Saiyan Goku. Yeah! Come here, Gotta be a lion now, man. Gotta be a lion. Gotta go hunt. This is all I needed, man. Just that confidence and I'm ready to go. Everything has been amazing, honestly. Like Elijah, RJ, Cassie, they just know what they're doing. They care so much and you just feel that. We're building an army or we're going to war against the people that don't do this right. I don't want you to go out there and fall on your face. You're going to. We all do. I want to eliminate the amount of times you have to go out there and do it wrong. This is a relationship building. Job. If you're on the fence about attending, please attend. You'll be glad you did and it'll totally improve your business, help you get started in the business, but you have to be prepared to work. Don't don't sleep on it. You know, if you're out there and you, you kind of thinking about it, just go ahead and do it. You will not regret it. You'll love it. Hello, this is RJ. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good hanging in there. Hey, um, I was giving you a call concerning 375 uh, Cleveland Road. Yes. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm the POA uh, for Mrs. Reed. So I was given a call because she sent me over the contract to take a look for, take a look at it for her. Right. And see, you know, how we can possibly you know, move forward if we can. So there are, um, there are two concerns um, that I have thus far. I'm not sure if she was able to share this with you or not. Um, the first concern is it, it is back taxes on the property. Okay. And I just wanted to be sure that you guys were aware that they were back taxes on the property. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Um, it, how much back taxes are there? $27,578.83. Oh, geez. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of taxes. I mean, the, it is. I mean, the taxes aren't even that much a, a year, are they? I mean, the, the property right. value is so low on that. How did it, how did it end up being that much? Um, just, just didn't pay, you know, she owned the property for quite some time and she didn't really have much interest in it and kind of, you know, just let the property sit there. So, <laughs> hmm. unbelievably, you know, she still owns it and everything. So, I wanted to, and that's why I was telling her, you know, you have to, you know, be very clear, you know, when you're talking to people about, you know, uh, you know, about property, you know, you have to make sure you, everything is disclosed that they need to know to make sure that, you know, we're still interest in the property. Right. Um, okay. Give me a second. I, sorry, I've got a lot of properties in the works. So I just want to verify this. The tenant right now is paying $700 a month, right? No. Oh, Okay. Uh, that's what she had told me. No, uh, the tenant is supposed to be paying that, um, but the tenant is not currently paying, no. Okay, um, does she know the tenant or is this like an eviction situation where the tenant's just not paying? It will be an eviction situation where the tenant is just not paying. Um, they've been there for, for some time and every time, you know, they stop paying, then she, you know, does a three day notice and then they start back and pick back up. And so it's just been kind of a roller coaster kind of situation. But, you know, <laughs> if they get an eviction notice, then they'll, then they'll pay. But, you know, um, sometimes they'll be paying consistent and then sometimes they won't. And then, then if they were dealing with the pandemic at this time, you know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> It's just a lot going on with a lot of tenants all over, but you know, um, they are there, but they aren't current with their payment. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. so she was wanting me to pay the 16,000 on top of the back taxes. 
Oh, yeah. Well, she wasn't really familiar with how much exactly was owed on the taxes. That's why before I called, I wanted to be real clear, you know, um, to make sure, you know, because I've been in the real estate business since the late 90s. So, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, very familiar, you know, right. with all aspects. And so, you know, I'm like, well, well, let me, you know, check, you know, check on this property and see, you know, where we're at, you know. So gotcha. basically when she, you know, said 16000 it was before she was aware that she owed that much in taxes. So that's why I called, um, I text you guys, I text you last night, but I figured it might, might have been a little later. I got tied up, but, you know, I wanted that so I'm reaching out this morning. To I got you. Everything, you know. So I know you said there was a there was another concern. So let's let's come back to the back taxes because I feel like that's going to be the biggest concern. What was the other concern you had? Okay, so the other concern is um, inspection of the property mm -hmm. um, because you know it is tenants there that is not paying. So I'm sure you know you could could get in. But, you know, will it be the whole 24-hour notice sort of thing? And, right. You know, will be a little, a little sticky. Right. And know, then you have, just, you have tenants that aren't paying that you're trying to do an inspection with. So that makes it even more <laughs> sticky. Um, it's, it's, it's a sticky, sticky situation. Right. I just wanted to be clear. So well. Be clear with that. No, I, I appreciate all this information. So um, here's the deal. I. I, I often say this as uh, an investor that buys real estate across the country. Um, our main job is to solve people's problems, right? And it sounds like, sounds like this is a, a pretty big problem from the aspect of there's quite a bit of property taxes owed on this that just continue to accrue, right? And then now we've got a tenant who's not paying rent. Um, I mean, this sounds a, a bit interesting situation. So from your perspective, I, I don't know how involved you are in the property or anything like that, but what is what was your idea as far as how you guys were going to be able with the, how were y'all going to be able to move this property or sell this property? What was y'all's ideas on how y'all could, could get rid of this problem? Um, well, the idea is, well, cause we, we, we talked about it in the past, but we, you know, it, you know, the property wasn't, you know, for sale. So, you know, when you guys really contacted, contacted her, um, and how did you guys contact her to, cause she didn't list it or put it out there for sale. You guys just kind of find people. Yeah. So what I do is I buy lists. Um, through a software that is basically going to identify homeowners that are distressed in some form or another. So in this, it could have been the, the default taxes. It could have also just been that, you know, it's, it's a high equity absentee house because she doesn't owe anything on it. Right. No, she doesn't. Right. So that could have, that could have been how I got her information. But uh, I just reached out through text message um, and, and got a hold of her that way. We had a, a conversation back and forth about the property. Um, you know, she said that she wanted 16000 for it. I said, does there a property or does the property currently have a tenant? She said, yes. She said they're paying $700 a month. Um, I agreed. I said, okay, I can do the $16,000. Um, I can close quickly. She agreed. She said, send it over. I didn't know anything about, about you or, or the power of attorney. And then at that point in time, she said she was a little bit concerned about, uh, the contingency upon inspection. I assume you saw the property and it was as is. And I told her, you know, it is as is, but I still need to go over there and lay eyes on it. And and see the property and make sure, you know, tenants haven't, you know, flushed concrete down the pipes and, you know, tore the place up. You know, I haven't seen the inside. Uh, and, and so she, she didn't really say a whole lot back to me. And then she asked me, you know, is this from titanium? And I'm like, yes, that's my company. I'm the sole 100% owner. She said, okay, I'm at work. Uh, my power of attorney will be contacting you shortly. 
I said, okay, thank you so much. So that that's where the the okay. conversation. That's how we got to to here today, right? Um, okay. Okay. Cool. So here's my question. I know, obviously, it sounds to me like she wants to sell the property, right? But yeah. the the back taxes is, is that's a you know we're talking about. You said it was twenty six thousand, right? Twenty seven five seventy eight. Okay, so twenty seven thousand five hundred. So even if I just said I'll pay the back taxes, the the price just went up eleven thousand five hundred dollars on me you know with this one phone call so that's that's obviously a bit surprising and then it got even worse because instead of the tenant paying the tenant's not paying um is is the seller open to any sort of creative options i i mean i don't even know how creative i could get because it's back taxes i mean it's like I, those have to be paid um and they're really not well, going to our... go ahead. Yeah. Well, actually in our city though, and I mean, to cut you off in our city, you know, you can actually get, um, you know, you can get on a payment plan. So I'm not sure what your intentions will be, you know, after you have purchased the home, but basically what happens is, um, the home is done in our name. Um, you could get on a payment plan, then they would, take those, uh, the 27,000 and divide it over a five year period. And then that'd be the monthly payment, um, for the taxes itself for five years. Um, you know, and then, but if it's, if you're an investor, you know, it, it only go over a two or three year, um, time for a payment plan. So basically a payment plan can be made, you know, on the property, you know, and, um, you know, that, that is an option, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, it's really all dependent. I was there yesterday. I didn't go in, but you know, um, you know, it was definitely, you know, kind of music playing and, you know, it was, uh, <laughs> it seemed to have been, you know, very, you know, active, you know, um, uh, seeing people in the home and things like that. So, um, uh, looks like everything is pretty much up and running, you know, fans in the windows and you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so my plan is to go back over there after I, you know, after I had talked to you guys to see, because, you know, if you guys were still interested, then, you know, then we would take the necessary steps to, you know, get in and, you know, uh, take pictures and, you know, uh, talk to the tenants and see where we're at with them. Um, so, you know, that was like, you know, the plan, but I'm, of course, want to talk to you guys first to see where you were at. Because now that, you know, it's like, okay, well, let's go ahead and sell this. Um, if you guys decided, you know, not to sell it, then we would, you know, still move forward and, you know, try to sell it, you know, at this point. It just it wasn't a, any activity of selling it, you know, um, you know, at this time. You know, she's in another state. It's, you know, kind of a lot going on. Um, but, you know, I do have a, a you know, ability to, um, to sign on her behalf, you know. Um, so we could definitely get things done, but you just have to let me know if there's something you guys feel like is feasible, you know, for you so we can see work. And then, yeah, one other concern that I had was the signable contract. Uh, the buyer should have the right to sign and sell, transfer, market, or pledge otherwise. Um, really would like to just deal with, you know, whoever's buying the property just to buy it, not to do like double closings and, you know, get kind of off into all of that, you know, so. Would definitely like to not have an assignable contract. Just want to close with whomever it is and kind of keep it moving, you know, unless, you know, it's something exact concrete, you know, that, you know, you already have another buyer or something like that. And that's something that can, I guess, possibly be discussed at that time, but don't want to like market the property and kind of like just put it out there because, you know, we haven't even put it out there, you know, as of yet, I'm mean, sure it will sell. You know, but just hadn't, you know, just hadn't sold it, you know, as of yet, because it was in hopes that, you know, um, that could get things, you know, going with the tenants because the tenants have been there, you know, for, you know, for a number of years, you know, a few years and really didn't want to kind of uproot, you know, people, you know, she was just being really, you know, really nice, but, you know, not really 
really doing much with the property to, you know, to kind of benefit herself, you know. So now at this point, she's trying to uh, to do that, you know, either, you know, sell it, whichever, you know, however she needs to. Um, let me ask you a question. You said they'll do a payment plan on the back taxes. If I'm an investor, they're only going to give me three years to pay that back. Do they charge interest on that or is that interest free? It's interest free. Okay. So if it's 27,500 and they put me on a payment plan for three years, that's $763 a month. And the tenant was only paying 700 plus I'm going to have insurance and well, the actual property taxes, um, that's, that's accruing over those three years. Um, man. Yeah. But those tenants don't have to stay in there either, you know, because it looks like it's a, you know, pretty decent home, you know, with different programs like, uh, section eight and eating different things that we have here that can have guaranteed payments, you know, if the home is, um, you know, where, you know, it can be, you know, it can be rented out for, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars a month, you know, um, to where, you know, it may be, you know, maybe something, you know, doable, you know, we're covering, you know, the taxes too as well. So, you know, it's a couple different options, you know, but, you know, on a person, you know, you know, at least the home will be, you know, you know, paid off and, and clear, you know, at a certain time. You know, if it's something that, you know, that you feel would be a good investment, you know, for you. Right. But even if I were to get eight to $900 a month, section eight, I mean, I'm still $763 a month on the back taxes, plus my insurance, plus the, the current property taxes. And then as a, as a, investor i always go into a deal assuming that i'm going to have vacancy maintenance and capital expenditures to maintain the property you know and so i have to look at those items as well um let me ask you and and i hate to ask this question but is the seller in a position to where she could help cover some of the property taxes that are owed, the back taxes? She is not. Okay. Hmm. Well, is she in a position to where she could help cover the monthly payment at, at some level? I mean, because I, I want to make the deal work, but it has to make sense. And I know you say the property will sell, but I think from the level of any investor that's going to be looking at this is going to say, there's, there's millions of properties out there for me to buy. I'm assuming a lot of issues um, from, from the seller, you know? And so I have to make sense of that is, is there any kind of way that she could help make payments on the back taxes to us of some sort? I mean, just to help alleviate that burden a little bit, because I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to like go to the city and get them to even give me the payment plan. And assuming everything that you're telling me is hundred percent accurate, at the 763 plus, I'm going to have to evict the tenants, probably go in there and do some work, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, that's a, that's a lot of liability and, yeah. and effort and, and sweat equity to, to go in there to assume negative cash flow. You know, I mean, I, I got to, is there, is there any way that the seller could kind of work with us a little bit there? Well, um, well, the whole point of her getting rid of the property is for her to make some money. So were you talking about just paying because since you offered her the 16, it'll be, you know, 16, I guess, plus the 11 and make the 27 where she, then she wouldn't be receiving anything. Well, yeah, I mean, I, the, the, 
the property is is not going to be worth. I mean, you, look, she told me sixteen thousand dollars. Now you're calling me saying uh, there's twenty seven thousand five hundred in back taxes. I mean, yeah, this this is no longer becoming a, a deal. I mean, this is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I, and that's what I figured too. That's what I, you know, had explained to her. Like, it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to make sense for an investor. Yeah. Uh, this type of property is, this, this type of property is for uh, a homeowner, someone who wants to maybe pay, you know, 10000 for the property and then take over the taxes because they just want to live there. You know, and they don't have a problem with doing that or something. You know what I'm saying? But for an investor standpoint, it would be, you know, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely understand. That's why I wanted to make sure when I called you, I had all the, you know, the information that was needed to have. <laughs> make sure that you knew up front what was all going on. So, um, what are the areas, um, what areas do you like to purchase in? I, I purchase anywhere in the, the country. I mean. Well, well, do you like houses that has like a point of sale that may be in the Heights? Or do you like to deal with Cleveland where there's no kind of point of sale or it does not matter? Uh, it doesn't matter. A anything that I can, I can either cash flow um, when I'm done, either rehabbing it or assuming a tenant or something that I can go in and fix up and, and make a, a solid uh, profit after fixing it up. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, you know, I have some other, you know, properties that, you know, that you may be interested in. So I'll, you know, send you over some information here sometime today. Maybe something else can work, but yeah, it doesn't sound like this one is going to work. I'm pretty, was pretty sure of that because, you know, it's just too much taxes, you know? Yeah, the, the taxes much tax. pretty much killed that deal, you know? I mean, it's just yeah. way too much. But uh, do you have anything in, in Euclid or Garfield Heights or Clark Fulton? Euclid, Garfield Heights, Clark Fulton. Um, yeah, I have some stuff in those. I know in Euclid... Uh, I got to check Garfield Heights. I know something was in on the west side over there, but it was like um, it was like two hundred some thousand. But I think it was like a three unit or four unit. But it was like in a perfect, perfect area. I can't remember. I have to look at it and see. But yeah, but yeah, I have some other stuff. So Euclid Garfield, you said the Clark Fulton. So I'll check to see um, what I may have available. Um, in those areas and, um, and, and get it over to you here today. Yeah. Now, any, you know, honestly, you know, anything that you have available in the Cleveland area, send it over to me. Um, and, okay. and let's see, you know, let me just go through and see, you know, what would be a good option. Um, when you send it over, uh, are you going to be able to send me like the rent rates and, and the purchase price and all of that? Yeah, the purchase price, um, majority of the properties, yeah, if, if it has tenants or something, for sure, you'll be able to have that information. But if it's, you know, vacant, you'll just have, you know, pretty much what the sales price is. And, you know, you'll be able to, you know, inspect and, you know, kind of, you know, get in or whatever, you know, as needed. That that won't be a problem. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, yeah, send okay. it send it over to me. And uh, I look, look forward to, to getting that today. Um, is this your cell phone number so I can save this? Yeah, this is my cell number. Okay, and real quick, refresh my memory. What's your name again? Uh, Vanessa. Vanessa. Vanessa Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. All right, Vanessa. I will save this phone number and very much look forward to seeing those other properties today. Sorry we couldn't make it work on Cleveland, but uh, maybe we can do something on one of your other properties. Yeah, for sure. And I will, um, I'll let her know. I'm going to have to make some other arrangements for this one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.